Hello and welcome. It's Friday, May 1st, and today on the live stream, I'll be chatting with my colleague Gonzalo about 10 ways to use TensorFlow Enterprise. Here we go. Hello and welcome to this live stream of Adventures in the Cloud, where we explore new and interesting concepts, tools, and ideas in the cloud. My name is Yifeng Guo, and I am delighted to be joined by Gonzalo Gasca Mesa today. He works on machine learning and TensorFlow in Google Cloud. How are you doing today, Gonzalo? Hi, Yifeng. How are you? I'm doing very good. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, absolutely. I was really excited to have you on. Um, you know, you wrote a kind of write-up of 10 ways to get your hands on TensorFlow Enterprise. And I guess to start us out, we should kind of delineate a little bit about what is TensorFlow Enterprise and how does it make it different from just TensorFlow by itself? And of course, we'll see a lot of that too as we go through this. Yes, uh, that's, that's a really good question. Let's start with that. So uh, pretty much TensorFlow Enterprise, it's a, it's a good cloud-optimized distribution of TensorFlow. Mm -hmm. Similar to the TensorFlow uh, open source version, uh, we provide uh, an optimized version of it, but uh, with three main characteristics. And basically, those three characteristics is like you have a managed service. So once you are using a, a TensorFlow Enterprise in Google mm -hmm. Cloud, uh, we have different products like Deep Learning VM, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, Deep Learning Containers that automatically and by default the software is installed. So you don't need to do any, any installation of it. Uh, the, nec the next part is the performance. So for this TensorFlow distribution, when you're using it in Google Cloud, you have uh, the advantage of using uh, Google Cloud Storage and BigQuery. So we are optimized to use those uh, products. And finally, the enterprise-grade support. So with enterprise-grade support, uh, when you're using the TensorFlow open source mm -hmm. version, they give you one year of security updates and bug fixes. But with us, you get three years. Nice. So for example, Let's say you, let's say yeah, yeah, it's it's great. So let, let's say you're using TensorFlow 1.15, mm -hmm. and they release a, a security patch uh, for a year, uh -huh. right? But with us, you will you will be supporting you for three years, right? And and also we we also give you a white glove support. So does that mean that if there are kind of bugs discovered, you know, two years from now of a TensorFlow release that came out today, that we would backport some of those fixes into older versions that we're still supporting? Yes, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, we do that, and to clarify, like TensorFlow Enterprise is not a fork of TensorFlow, so all the bug fixes and patches will be in the TensorFlow open source code repository. So it's open uh, for that's anyone. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So so even though it's it's called TensorFlow Enterprise, it's not for only for enterprises, so to speak. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. We have a question on the live chat. Uh, about the a link to I think to the blog post that you wrote, so I've got that right here. Ten different ways to use TensorFlow Enterprise. So for folks who want to follow along or are, are watching this later, you can uh, click that link, and we'll also include that link in the description below and down below the video. So with that, I guess we should uh, I'll switch over to our our desktop view here and get going. <laughs> Let's get going with. Um, the actual uh, blog post and, and these 10 ways. You know, we got one hour, we have 10 ways to use TensorFlow Enterprise, so that doesn't leave us a whole lot of time to do each one. So we may need to move quickly, as they say. Great. All right, so. Yeah, um, yeah I think you can see my screen, right, Gonzalo? Awesome. Yes, I can, I can so see. So I guess, yeah, we'll, let's, let's get into it. The first one here is just using the UI. Yeah, we're gonna start uh, very simple, you know, like go to the console, open the UI, and from there we're gonna start like uh, doing things more complex. Okay. And the audience is anybody, you know, you are a machine learning uh, infrastructure engineer, you are a researcher, you are a student, you are some uh, person that just get interested in, in machine learning and gonna get started with a Jupyter notebook. This is the right, you're in the right place. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's well said. So 
to, to start us off, it's creating VMs kind of, even though this first way is from the UI, we can actually do it three different ways. There's like three sub points, it looks like. Yeah. Awesome. So with the first one, we're going to create a deep learning VM, deep learning virtual machine. And it says here, we're going to go to Compute Engine, go to VM Instance, create instance, and select, uh, we're going to select Marketplace. So let's go over here. And you might need to talk me through it just so I don't have to toggle back and forth quite as quickly. Um, so yeah. I'm in the marketplace now, and I think we're going to search for deep learning VM. Yes, that's correct. And, uh, you know, just to clarify, mm -hmm. so TensorFlow Enterprise is, is available in three main products, right. right? The deep learning VM, the Jupyter Notebooks, or we call it AI platform notebooks, and the deep learning containers. So when you're creating a deep learning VM, uh, and you are creating a, a AI platform notebooks, they are, they're the same infrastructure. They are the same underlying compute engine machine. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you are creating one deep learning VM and you want to convert to the app from notebooks, you just need to check uh, one uh, one option and that make it a app yeah. from notebooks. And I think that, that uh, option is this this one right here, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that that's an important note for, for our viewers, right? That when we want to make this notebook, don't just skip to the bottom and, and hit deploy. Uh, take a moment to actually select you know, if you want GPUs, how many GPUs, what kind, um, as well as checking out both of these checkboxes. Yeah, and that, that's one of my favorite features of uh, the deep learning mm -hmm. VM, like the, selecting the GPU and the ability to be able to install the NVIDIA driver. I, I don't know if you have actually tried to install um, NVIDIA I did it once, like and then I never did it again, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was quite an exercise and a lot of Google searching ridiculous kind of error statements coming out of the command line just being like some libraries not available, this wasn't compiled right, couldn't build this thing, couldn't find that thing, wrong permissions to write into this folder. It was a mess. Yeah, it's it's painful. The, one of the reasons like uh, I see I subscribe to one uh, GitHub issue for TensorFlow and, and and the installations of drivers and I get I get notifications like literally every day with questions. <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, what the TensorFlow team does, right? They build the image for GPU, uh -huh. and uh, they try to use the latest uh, CUDA version of NVIDIA driver version by that time when they build right. it, right? Uh, but uh, NVIDIA keeps releasing drivers. NVIDIA keeps releasing new sure. versions, right? So what if, what if you want to use a different TensorFlow version? Uh, the same TensorFlow version with a newer NVIDIA driver, ah, the newer CUDA okay. version. So it hasn't been like right. built for the newer CUDA version yet. Exactly. Awesome. And uh, we do that yeah. for you. So we do, we install the latest uh, CUDA version with, uh, we build the TensorFlow for you. So you don't need to do it. So just like literally enable that checkbox. Sweet. So that's the UI for deep learning VMs. And I guess while this is off spinning away, I'm going to open another console tab because, you know, whoever got in trouble with opening too many tabs, right? They never ran out of memory because, you know, Chrome. <laughs> Let's see, let me pull this out into a separate window. This way it'll be a little bit easier to, to see the tabs here. So we're gonna open this in a new tab. We got this one from Deep Learning VMs, it's running. And I guess the next version we have is AI Platform Notebooks. And so that's, um, you know, we've right. kind of looked at that in the past on the live stream under AI Platform. And then you go to Notebooks and let that load up. And we can kind of click new instance here and very quickly end up with some kind of instance. And so specifically, I can see here, it says TensorFlow Enterprise 1.15 and Enterprise 2.1, which makes it very clear kind of what we're getting, which is nice. Right. Yeah. That's the other way that, uh, you know, you can you can create the, the notebook yeah. instance. And one of the uh, one of the advantages also for the notebook instances is once you get access to the to your Jupyter notebooks, mm -hmm. specifically your Jupyter yeah. Lab, we're gonna enable a, a URL. Yeah. Right? Uh, when you see the Open Jupyter Lab, so you will just click directly and and being able to to access your your notebooks. And and that's that's done in a in a secure way. Uh, we use the inverse proxy um, option uh, to do that. So now this final version is still from the UI is deploying it in a VM from a Docker container. So this is deep learning containers. Yes. So basically, uh, you know, on that one, we 
we create a regular compute instance, uh, any flavor mm -hmm. that you want, uh, just you know, enough uh, hard disks to be able to download the, the, the container and deploy it. And uh, we're going to be using the, the deep learning containers. In this case, uh, we selected a CPU version uh -huh. so we can load it uh, faster. Yeah. And, and we show how, what, are the, what are the image available for, for deep learning containers. And in this case, you know, it's a, it's a very simple example, like you deploy in a compute engine but you can take it anywhere, right. right? Like if you're using Kubernetes, uh, Qflow, it's another example uh, of you're using uh, on-prem as well. Uh, you should be using cloud, <laughs> but you know, we give you that option. Yeah. And uh, yes. Yeah, so I'm trying to get the UI here to catch up to me. So we're going to try to get this deployed in a container. So, and one of the things that I noticed when I was browsing on that, um, on your blog post, it talks about how we're going to deploy this container into the uh, container optimized uh, kind of operating system, right? And so right. that's, is that just like basically a thin wrapper around the container? We're just, we're sticking it inside a VM, but we're sticking a container into that VM? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, we're going to install the OS that optimizes operating system and on top of it, uh, we're gonna be deploying the container, and once you once you uh, log in into the into the instance, you should get an option like, hey, you know, you're gonna log in uh, for uh, uh, you're gonna uh, connect to the container directly. So you gotcha. Can, I've literally can, never seen uh, this checkbox before. <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah, of it's, it's, I mean, the text is you know pretty small, and and it's just kind of a one liner. It's easy to miss, and if you don't check it, yeah. then this this you know it's all gone. It's very easy to just move your eye down to boot disk and, and look at that instead. Um, so if we check that off, do we also need to select the container optimized operating system as well? I see kind of, I think I see that in your uh, screenshot. Yeah. Oh, it changed I, it I, for I, me. Uh, uh, How nice. Like I checked this box and, and yeah. it changed it from Debian to container optimized OS. So that's perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and there we can, you know, select the, uh, select the instance that we want. Mm -hmm. So I put the command that we can use to yeah. uh, to search for Let's... all the all the TensorFlow and <laughs> But it's on two lines when it's uh, rendered on the on the browser. It looks like uh, or something like that. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see what it says. It's because it, it originally said TF two dash command not found, so it's parsing it weird. Let's try it this way. Huh? It still doesn't recognize this command. Is there something weird in how how this is pasting? You can remove the graph. Do you see anything it's obvious? Shower. Okay. Yeah. Unrecognized arguments dash. <laughs> is this supposed to be a dash dash? Uh, I think, yeah, I think medium. Yeah. Is uh, it two dashes or one dash? I think it's right. two. I think medium when I posted it should. Yeah, it ripped up your your markup. Yeah, yeah. let's try this again. All right, I'll, I'll drop the TF the grep piece. All right, seventeenth time is the yeah. charm, folks. <laughs> it doesn't recognize Maybe dash dash one. repository. Is it just dash with a space? That doesn't seem right. And and uh, yeah, I think we I think that's a good. Yeah, uh, one of the things that uh, we, we want to mention is, you know, we also support uh, other other versions like uh, just vanilla uh, TensorFlow. We support Nightly as well. Mm. Uh, we, we also give you a base image with your CUDA uh, drivers. Oh, I think I, I know what happened. Yeah, it, the, like you said, the Medium turned that dash into one of those long dashes, the M dash. And then, so then when mm. I added another one, it was like a long dash and a tiny dash. But like I couldn't tell, so I just had to oh, delete okay. it and retype it manually, so that it rendered better. So this is the full list, huh? Yep. Where are the nightly ones? Or is that somewhere else? I think it does it in our experiment. Ah, okay. So so this is like all of the production stable releases, yeah. And it's like every combination; right. it's all over the place here, you know. All the R ones, one TF one CPU, yes. different versions of CPU. GPU and then TF2 CPU and then TF2 GPU. So it's it's everything under the sun. Which one are we gonna pick? Uh, let's pick the TF dash CPU. Just CPU without a version specification. Yeah, and 
and that will keep what that will give you the latest version of uh, TensorFlow. Nice. So you don't need to define manually. Yeah. So every time we'll just so we'll it. drop this in this link. It seems to be accepting it, yeah. validated, and and on the boot disk. Uh, yesterday I tried with the default uh -huh. one, so you're gonna increase the size. So you just click change and uh, uh -huh. maybe increase the size for the. Oh, is it a little bit small by default? Feet. Okay. Yeah, so the image wasn't able to fit. Oh, <laughs> oh it's only space. 10. That's tiny. Gonna, yeah. yeah. So you're going to yeah. yeah. throw another zero on, you know, it's, it barely counts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's going. Uh, meanwhile, I guess I'll take a peek back at our previous deployments, see how they're doing. Um, well, this window, Chrome window, has decided to fall over. Unfortunately, this is what I get for having too many tabs, I suppose. Um, let me close some of the ones in the background here. Maybe that'll help return some memory back to um, <laughs> from that Chrome is eating up back to the system. But let me, all right, let's try refreshing one of these. Oh yeah, as soon as I hit refresh, of course, the UI shows up. It decides <laughs> it doesn't want to play around anymore. Um, okay, so this looks like they're all de deployed. And it talks about how in the UI version, we want to connect to it. Uh, you can click SSH, right? We can, uh, this is how we grab the URL for our deep learning VM from the deployment manager. Is that right? Yep. Cool. So this is the first one we did with uh, Marketplace. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, that's not a URL. This is how we're going to get the URL. Um, nothing is showing up. So that's fun. Huh. Oh, they changed it from data lab to notebooks. So that command is, needs to be updated. <laughs> it's a good note for, uh, I'll take a quick screenshot of that so we can share it with the team. Yep. Yeah, and and that's exactly the URL. Yeah. So that will help you to, to access your Jupyter lab. And so that's one Jupyter lab down. And then we have our UI here. This one's even easier. I can just click a button. And so that's a second Jupyter Lab instance up and running. And these are different instances, which is kind of neat. So you have this one, and you can this one. You can see in the URL they're, they're they end up diff being different endpoints. What's funny to me is that even though these are both create one is created from deployment uh, from the marketplace, and the other one's from AI Platform Notebooks. This one has a folder called source and this one doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so so something is still a little bit different. It looks like in here there's the TensorFlow source code, the models repo, the TPU repo to help folks uh, get started right away without needing to even clone um, TensorFlow, which is kind of a handy thing. Nice. All right, so I'm going to close these JupyterLab tabs and um, let's, let's move on. Uh, oh yeah, did we start this Compute Engine one too? Container instance, yeah, this is also done. And so would that be the same kind of command um, as we saw before? Yeah, I think you can you can SSH and we, we should get a banner. Okay. Uh, but it, it won't get us the me. reverse proxy. Yeah, because- no, We didn't um, install that. <laughs> we didn't, yeah. yeah. So got lots of windows flying around today. But maybe when what we can do is uh, once you connect to the SSH, mm -hmm. we can uh, log in into the container and we can show the audience that you know TensorFlow is installed by gotcha. people there. And okay, so let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna cheat and run over to your blog post with all the handy commands. <laughs> uh, so thank you for putting that. Um, let's see. Oh right, I can't just paste it in though because. Even my laziness will get me eventually. Container name. How do we find the container name? Let's do a docker space ps dash a to see what's what's running. Docker. 
Nice. Make this wider. Clear. Run this again. All right. So it looks like we got a stack driver agent and a GCE container connet. Did we enter the? Uh... Is that not what we expected? <laughs> no, I wanted to see the uh, the TensorFlow Docker container. We did enter. I that thought we did. When we uh, it says this is the image though. But that's the image of the the container the container optimized OS here deep learning container image. So that's an interesting sure, quirk. Like we might we might need to yeah. skip past that or wait. Maybe do we need to wait longer or something? And uh, we should tell, we should okay. load it right okay. away. I don't know how so, to install it. You know, not everything works on the first try, I suppose. <laughs> okay, yeah. but it, it normally works. At least it works on your machine. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna what, what happened. And so I guess let, let's move on then to, to the second method, right? Which looks like it's basically very similar to what we did before, but via command line, right? So this is gcloud compute right. instances create. And uh, you actually created some uh, handy commands for me. Uh, we, we wrapped up a bunch of this into a, a shell script in uh, on, on this kind of VM that we're using to run commands from. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's at user local shared. No, user shared local? User uh, source. Source. Uh, user local source. Oh, no shared. Yes. Yeah, no shared. Great. Right, so this is our, our kind of list of um, commands. And so we can uh, just run, and you did a nice thing by um, including the printing out exactly what's being run. So this is the same command as, as what we see kind of right here in the in the medium post. So that'll create. And I've, I've, uh, I have a multiplexer running here, so we can actually kick off more options while this is running because <laughs> I, I realized that you know the okay. t4 is going to the gpu is going to take some time to attach and install so um let me let's see uh we're going to go into that folder again user local yep. source cd tfe so option three what are we at now option three we're going to create an ai platform notebook so again we have this kind of very similar but sort of different um you know, deep learning VM versus AI platform notebook. And I guess the, the key point here is that mostly about the fact that we have a new dedicated CLI. Yes. Uh, so, you know, in the past, you will see documentation and a lot of our uh, samples in the, in the GitHub uh, official, uh, official repo that, you know, if you want to create a mm -hmm. notebook, you need to pass metadata, yeah. right? That you would need to say that, like, what is uh, my uh, proxy, uh, my proxy owner, and and it's the same infrastructure underlying. So, it's, uh, but we said like you know, if we really want users to uh, you know create notebooks, let's let's release an, an API. So right now we have a beta API for the notebooks where you can create instances the same way you access in the UI, right? Like uh, in this case, the command is cloud beta notebooks. So then the Google Cloud new new SDK uh, should be able to to give you that option. So just make sure if you guys are, are running the, uh, this right now, just make sure you have a recent version of the SDK. Awesome. Otherwise, you can, you, you're not going to get the cloud better. Yeah. Yep. And I'm looking at our list of, of VMs in the project right now. And um, wow, yeah, I, at first I couldn't believe it. The, it. This command finished so fast, I thought maybe um, you you had written this, they, they'd written the uh, CLI so that it just returns right away. But it really did finish. TFE3, the VM really just came up super, super fast. <laughs> oh, yeah. <nice. laughs> so that, because like over here, the other one is still going. Of course, oh, it just finished. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, disk size is larger than image. Great. We, I think we ran out of quota or something. The zone does not have enough resources. Okay. We were making too many, too many containers at once. <laughs> we might need to clear some stuff out. Okay. Um, just to make room for all of this. So I'm gonna kick, initiate a few deletes um, while we keep going here. So this is creating with a new command. I like how clean this um, 
CLI is, it's much shorter than using this long command. Like I always thought it was weird that we had to pass in like the GPU maintenance policy. It seems very kind mm -hmm. of in the weeds. Um, but now yeah. we can just kind of have this nice, you know, only supply the information you really need. Uh, so this is via deep learning containers. This is running the container directly in Docker on whatever compute environment I, I'm currently running on. Is that right? Yeah, so if you wanna, you know, just run in your local machine, you wanna start experimenting right. in your local environment with Jupyter Lab, you can so I, I can just do Docker it. run right here, and of course. Yeah, you may wanna change the port to eighty maybe instead of eighty. Oh, okay. Uh, because I believe uh, maybe enabled by default. Yeah. And we might have to. We might run into the same problems as we saw. Is it uh, which one do I need to change it? Is it both of them or just the one? Uh, just the, the first one. Right? I can never remember which one's the <laughs> the source and which one's the target. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna paste that in, and it's going to. Whoa, that was fast. What fast. happened? Uh, so right now, uh, if you do a Docker ps dash a. Uh, if I run this command yesterday, so we already download the image. Oh, that's so why it's so fast. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but otherwise, you know, we need to download all the I was going to say, that would have been crazy. I was like, that was like, it's as fast as running like an LS. Um, and you can see, uh, you know, during the, uh, in, in that show, you can see that we are listening on the port mm -hmm. 80 uh, externally, and we're pointing to the 8080 in the Docker uh, container. So you can actually, I think you can just put the public IP address for the uh, for your instance if you go to the compute engine, and you should get the uh, the Jupyter oh, Lab. Oh, all right, uh, experiment. URL. All right, so let's see if I can find it. So there, here's this one. This is my public IP, and if I click on it, and then I want to go to port eighty, you're saying? Oh, actually, clicking mm -hmm. on it just directly worked, but it went to slash lab because I think we had a Jupyter Lab instance up. But yeah. We want to connect into the Docker container. Interesting, but it says Jupyter on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Doesn't seem to like it. Uh, I think it's column, but oh, the default shoot. is just, of course. Uh, wow, I'm so a, silly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it redirects to slash lab. Yeah, so oh. it's, it's perfect. So that's, that's nice. Just, uh, that's how it defaults can just do it locally. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you can deploy it. I mean, if you're running more yeah. complex um, scenarios in production, uh, GKE or Qflow. Mm -hmm. Now, and, I don't um, maybe I don't run Docker locally almost ever. So, can you remind me how to turn this Docker container off? Because I want to make sure, uh, and for our viewers, that to basically prove to ourselves that this connection that we have right now is to the one that's in that Docker container, and that if I turn it off, this link will stop working. Yeah, so you can do a uh, Docker stop. Okay. And you you can so pass in the uh, container ID. The name, the container ID. Yeah. So it's gonna think. It's gonna think some more. If I remember correctly, this VM we made it was a high memory one with only two CPUs. So we're paying the price now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you see over here, it's already said there's a connection error. And so we're confirming that this Good. image exited five seconds ago, and now if I, I mean, it already we already know it's it's dead, but we can confirm that this cannot be reached. Awesome. So we we've proven to ourselves that this works. That's a really neat uh, trick to like get up and running really fast without you know you can just have a VM and you just boom run the Docker container and then the port forwarding built into that command really handy. All right, so now we're onto the notebooks API, which is. Uh, we kind of touched on by using the CLI, right? The G Cloud Beta Notebooks command. But now we're going to use the API programmatically, I think. Yeah, so for folks that already have some workflows mm -hmm. when you are actually deploying some infrastructure uh, with Python or any other, other programming language, we also provide now the, the API so you can start using it. Uh, in this case, uh, we have a Python script that um, uh, this Python script is just gonna uh, use a JSON as a source. So in that JSON is your body of the API request. 
And the first thing you need to do is enable the API. Mm -hmm. right? The second is you need to use the uh, Python client uh, for uh, Google Cloud. So you just need to do the PP install. Yeah, the, so, the so that's client. what I just did there. And so that was in our, yeah. our little shell and script. And I can show folks again there that that's what's happening here. You can see we run the enable and we do a pip install. And I already have a virtual env environment running. So yeah. that installs nicely. And then we have this Python script, which is, um, what was it, option5.py. And so it's it's a it's a bit of a doozy. Yeah, we're using the uh, the discovery API, uh -huh. so you can see how how we are we are defining uh, this JSON object which we call body. Uh, we define the instance name and all the parameters that you normally you know enter in the you will see in the UI uh, or in the G Cloud SDK. Right. But uh, you know you are going. Uh, in a lower level, yeah. right? like if you want to like, really format that or how, up, how did you or how did you figure out what to populate this body with? Is there any sort of way to let's say I create a notebook? Is there some way to take an existing notebook and extract the parameters that would be appropriate for basically reproducing that notebook over and over again? That's a that's a good question. There's a trick I normally uh -huh. use. Yeah, what's so if you go to like approach? Any, uh, if if you go to any, to the mm -hmm. console to the console to the like to the compute engine yeah. instance directly, uh -huh. uh, you will see at the at the lower part of the web page. So just just click any instance, for example your Ufang uh -huh. instance. You go all the way down, and there will you will see a equivalent a, rest an option that will tell you yes that option. Oh, cool. So th that's how you can actually figure out some okay. of this. I mean, you can go to the to the reference yeah. API, but this is what I normally <laughs> do. I just you know start copying these right. Things. But yeah. but like this is a really good starting point. It's not literally the the full text of what you need, but it has a lot of the pieces that we might be looking for, and a lot of the values and URLs and IPs and and yeah, I see what you mean. There's a lot of these you know exactly. there's scopes and because yeah, there's a lot of requirements in this. Oops, this is what I get for scrolling in a window, right? Um, there's a lot of requirements in here, like it, there's a lot of, uh, there's known things, very typical things like your boot disk, boot disk size and, uh, what type of machine you want. But then you also have to like supply the network URL. That's a, that's a long one and the subnet. So like, it's, <laughs> it's quite, quite a bit, but it's good to know that, um, yeah. uh, oops, I accidentally edited the file. So that's not great. Okay, I will quit without saving. <laughs> Got to get out there before I accidentally <laughs> screw up the thing. Uh, I guess we should, we may as well try running it while we're here. Uh, I got a yep. uh, Python 3 environment running here. Um, no, perfect. And it is complaining that there is no module named Google API client, even though we just installed it. Or at least I thought we just installed it. Maybe the dash dash user has something to do with that. Yeah, it doesn't like it with the virtual lamp. That's what I'm saying. All right. Now let's run the Python script again. Oh, uh, to client. Apparently, it was not a dependency. If you type Python three, would that run it? Uh, because right now Python dash v goes to three seven six. Yeah, oh, okay. so so it's already tied to this correctly, mm. which is nice. Try one more. Looks like it did it. Or something, right? Oh, Create okay. notebook response. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's nice that we have this output so we can see it. And this is the operation response. It's, it's pretty verbose. I know it's not the prettiest thing. We could probably paste this into some, to some kind of JSON formatter to get a get a nice, <laughs> nice looking output. But awesome! So we have this, uh, and we should be able to see evidence of this being created. TFE dash five was the name. So all of our VMs are TFE dash, and then the number corresponding to the version or, or the the approach that we're trying to do. And it's already up. Look at that! So fast. That was really fast, actually. Usually Thanks. it's like twenty seconds. That was that was quick. Um, <laughs> All right, on to using curl, num method number six. So we're really diving deeper and deeper into the kind of network stack. How manual can we make this? Uh, I'm expecting method seven to be like, arrange the bytes manually 
in Microsoft Paint <laughs> and then re-encode it from a PNG into text. Um, let's see, create yeah. uh, instance using curl by having this giant JSON file, which is basically what we had before in the Python script, right? And then we can just yeah. you know what, run what? that curl. You know what? Uh, you know, uh, one of the reasons why I I was thinking of of this like why why would would somebody run a curl right like uh, directly if you have any other other options? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking like you know if you are using a different programming language other than Python right like let's say Java Go and you're gonna start building your your pipeline right you already have a, a MLOps pipeline or DevOps pipeline mm -hmm. pipeline you may want to start you may want to use these right like how the JSON object looks at low levels so you start building your requests in other programming language. Uh, that could be a, a use case, right. I guess. Or yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, things. and yeah, a lot of times when we're testing APIs and stuff, curl is definitely a common uh, approach. You know, you get for a brief period of time, kind of familiarize yourself with with all the different arguments to curl, the dash Ds and the dash Hs and the authorization tokens, and manually getting auth tokens and access tokens, and how to specify your you know post versus get things, and then about a week later after you stop doing it i i've always just i just forget it all <laughs> and then the next time i need it again it's like <laughs> how do i use curl again i don't remember um so yeah um, yeah so that's yeah so uh, curl wow yeah it just works so, uh, you know every api request will return a, a long running uh -huh. operation because we are building up the machine right it could it could be successful it could be not successful yeah. so that uh that then you can parse that uh, running operation uh, to see what's nice. the what's the what's the state mm -hmm. of that right? like could, could be a success or could be right. a failure and, and you can just parse the error code or success code yeah or yeah you get a little more direct and i guess if people didn't like our notebook uh, cli they could build their own <laughs> command line tool with yeah. the with <laughs> once they have the you know they have the introspection into the web back and forth that's funny um and we can see that the again the Compute engine is on fire today, well, in a good way, where yeah. um, <laughs> where it's just working really nicely and things are coming up quick. That's great. Uh, AI platform training. All right. Uh, we've yeah, I definitely have spent a fair amount of time playing around with uh, AI platform training. Uh, and, you know, this is really just kicking off training jobs. I am inclined not to necessarily kick off this training job uh, live, not because I'm worried about it, but just because it looks like this is a pretty intensive uh, training job. Yes, we're using a ResNet. Yeah, we're training uh, ResNet. Uh, one of and the it's with a V100. Yes. Uh, so one of the uh, you know one of the new features for AI platform training is that uh, you can actually pass a custom container. Mm -hmm. So you can build your container and then ask Google Cloud, hey, you know, I'm gonna be training this model with this. Right. Oh, model. I see here. Yeah, master image URI. Uh oh, I think Gonzalo, you froze for a second. Um, okay, I'm back. great. Sorry. But yeah, you were saying that you can use um, custom containers for training, and I was I was pointing out that there's this master image URI, which kind of is the the secret to this command, to in some extent. Yes, and uh, all this code is in the AI platform samples uh, repo. So. If uh, you folks are interested in in seeing what is um, what is there. Uh, I'm gonna post the mm -hmm. link uh, right now. You can you can awesome yeah it definitely. And I think going forward, a lot of our samples are also uh, in that repo. So let me just post it in the in the chat. So in that one, uh, we are we are just using the. Uh, we're just passing a, the TensorFlow Enterprise container to, to AI Platform Training okay. and, and we train a, a REST. So does AI Platform Training use um, TensorFlow Enterprise by default or is it something we have to specify via kind of doing doing the manual kind of configuration with this container? Uh, today, as of now, it does okay. not. Uh, but going forward, we want to have a consistent uh, platform that only use TensorFlow Enterprise, and I think that's coming soon. Cool. Uh, uh, also, that's true for serving. Uh, supporting Docker containers in serving is mm -hmm. coming as well. So you should be able to to use a Docker container in serving. That's a feature that has been, uh, you know, 
it's being very important and a lot of customers being asking for it so it's coming in the next few months awesome months. yeah uh, definitely looking happen. forward to that and uh, i'm sure I'll, I'll try to find one of these live streams and uh play around with it <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah gonzalo did you get a chance to paste that link to the repo uh, is it is it this one here the ai platform samples kit and then yes, in the seeding into this path to get to the particular ones, or do you want to paste the yeah. high level one? Uh, you can just paste the high level one. Okay, that, that one's already detailed enough. Great. Yeah, thanks for the reminders. Um, let's see. Then we have method number eight, getting through it, getting through it. Um, TensorFlow yeah. Cloud. Okay, so this one was interesting to me. When I was browsing this uh, post, I had not really heard of this project before. And, you know, being in, you know, Cloud DevRel, I was kind of surprised that I hadn't already known about it. It was definitely one of those moments where I was like, oh, wait, was I supposed to know about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a new project. Uh, I think it's being sponsored by Francois Gillette, uh -huh. the creator yeah. of Keras, yeah. and being developed by Pravina, one of the uh, engineers in the TensorFlow team. That's awesome. So one of the that's one of the questions that you always have is okay, I'm using a Jupyter notebook locally, right? But I want to train it, train my notebook in the cloud, or train my code that I'm testing in my local environment in the right. cloud. How do I do that, like easily? Right? It's not that I want to copy or learn Kubernetes or learn infrastructure. I just want to deploy the same code with different data set, uh, with a lot of GPUs. Uh, a lot of CPU, a lot of memory. How do I do it, right? And and there's been uh, there's been a lot of work for this, right? Uh, if if you guys are familiar with Qflow project, there used to be a uh, a module called fairing. So the idea with fairing is you are training a notebook or you are training code, and you can just select where you want to take that code and 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 the infrastructure where you want to use it, right? Like, uh, uh, but one of the disadvantages is that yes, you need to have Qflow or Kubernetes installed yeah. before. Right. But uh, this project, the idea is exactly that. You don't need to have uh, a Qflow or a Kubernetes cluster to do it. You can literally just pass, uh, use this library and tell the library where you want to install the, uh, your training code and, and run your training model. So uh, basically what it's ha what's happening is you, is you have a Python script or you have a Jupyter notebook and you're going to define where you're going to train it. In this case, we're going to build a Docker file locally, and then we're going to push that Docker file to AI platform training. And that's where you're going to do the training. And that's just with few, uh, just few calls on the API. And uh, maybe we can show them. That's, uh, I think, option eight. We have a... Uh... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, option eight is the TensorFlow Cloud project. Yep. So uh, basically, uh, it, it's a... Uh, you know, you can install uh, the pip installer directly from P uh, from PyPy, yeah. the pip install mm -hmm. cloud, or you can build it from uh, from source by cloning the repo right. and building oh, it. Oh, okay. So your um, your option eight script is is how to build it from source. It looks like. Ah, yes. okay. So here I was to toiling away when I could have had the much simpler solution by just pip installing. Yeah, the, the only reason. No, I'm doing because I'm using uh, this. This repo is is being in, is being mm -hmm. developed like uh, as we yeah. speak, right? Like there's they're adding a lot of new features and, and you can it's, it's very very it's very small. It's, it's very small uh, repo, so you, you can you can just build the consoles and get the latest. All right, so I'm I'm gonna so you want me to edit this? Whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. All right, that's what we're stuck with. Uh, you you can do the. Uh, uh, colon set space paste. Oh yeah, that's right. I used to I used to use Vim better. Uh, is it paste or no paste? Uh, yes, like that. Enter. Hooray! <laughs> yeah. Wow, I can't open. Uh, I probably need a pseudo Vim because we're working in such a ridiculous repo right now. Yeah. So. Uh, you gotta go back and we're gonna see what. Okay, I tried to make a file called tfcloud to paste that code in, but I need to run sudo. Uh, right? Oh, 
but you're gonna go to the cloud. You couldn't go to the cloud. Just folder. Let's go to the cloud okay. folder. Um, and then I think we have the tests. I think on the mm -hmm. test. Yeah. Test integration. Oh, you're talking about this file. You want to edit? Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Um, sudo this that. All right. Now I think we have right access to this file. <laughs> TFC. Um, and so you're saying, oh, this is the end of the file. Yeah. So uh, basically, what uh, the API is, is telling you is, um, what is your entry point, right? What is your Python script mm -hmm. that you're going right. to that you're going to use? Uh, in case you want to do this retraining, it asks you for the distribution strategy, like par parameter yep. servers or mirror strategy, etc. You want to define you want to define your uh, your dependencies in a requirements folder in a requirements uh, te text mm -hmm. file. And what we want to do is we want to define which is going to be our Docker container, right? The base yeah. of the yeah Docker that's container. not included so that's here, is it? Gonna... Nope. And we want to add the uh, the command docker base image and i think uh in, if you go to the if you go if you go above yeah you want to add that command docker base image yeah brilliant so that's just going to be so with that, in as just one of these options yeah and with that, should this with, be a string uh, uh yes I was just like, that doesn't look like valid Python. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And that's all we have to change. Awesome. Yes. So. And you have your Python file. Mm -hmm. That will be, that will be using this Docker file as base. We're going to build it locally and then we're going to push it to GCR. And then the Apple from training will get it and start nice. training. It. So it'll just take so care of the entire workflow for us. So yes. Python, and then we're going to, should I stay in the cloud folder or should I be in the test folder? I think based on the relative paths that were shown in the code, it wants me to be in this folder. But, but think, we'll yeah, see if my my guesses are worth anything. <laughs> and I think she just added support uh, last week to train a Byte uh, notebook. Oh, fun, yeah. So you should be able to yeah you should i haven't tested uh but you should be able to test like training a, a notebook directly. okay because a lot of the folks now uh you know they use uh to automate the process of you know executing yeah notebook. oh i like this they you can access your job logs at this url looks promising awesome you, they you know folks use paper uh -huh. mail yep paper uh, mail is uh, and be is uh right? what is that so open source project PR. for running notebooks yeah, that came, I think it was from Netflix, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, it's from Netflix. Yeah, so now we have this job that's that's uh, been started 20 seconds ago. That's awesome. So so that was way easier to start a training job than I think any AI platform training job I've ever started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, nice. That's really cool. Nice. I could probably use a, a shorter job ID, but you know, that's just personal preference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit on the long side for my taste. Uh, all right. So that's number eight. We are rapidly approaching the end of the list and the end of the hour. So let, let's see what we got on tap for these final two. Deployment manager creates a set of Google resources as a deployment. Uh, what's the, what's the idea here? Talk me through this one a little bit. Yeah, so the idea is like, you know, we have seen curl mm -hmm. commands, G, uh, G cloud commands, but when you really think of a production system that you want to deploy infrastructure, if your boss asks you, you think, tomorrow I need to prepare two servers with one database, how do I mm -hmm. do that, right? Like, yeah, you can start putting shell commands together and create firewall rules, create hard disks right. and all that, and then end up with a big shell script. but. Uh, how did you actually have to make that, right? Like, uh, if you really want to treat the infrastructure as code, and I think that's how, what well, that's a new concept mm -hmm. for DevOps, you need to be able to define in a configuration file what your infrastructure looks right. like, right? 
So this is a new product. For, this is a, this, it's not a new product. It's, it's been a product for uh, for Google Cloud for a while. So they, it allows you to define a configuration files for deploying infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, we have an example okay. that uses. Uh, we're gonna deploy a, again a, a, a platform notebook instance, but uh, we define uh, that instance uh, via Jinja templates. So if you guys are familiar with uh, Python web development. Jinja is, uh, is a language based on Django that was uh, pretty much used for uh, web development. For yeah, Python. it's like a HTML template so language, allows... right? Yeah. So maybe we can go to the uh, to the repo, and then I think we can show the the, the people uh, the example there uh, because the files. So where, we, where is it? Air platform samples slash notebooks no, no tools. tools. Deployment manager. So which one do you want to look at? Uh, let's look at that one. Yeah, the, the first, first one. one. So this is how we, yeah. And this one, this is how we're going to be defining the things that we want to create, right? So we can say, uh, you know, we want to create an, uh, a notebook and this is the, the template that I'm going to be using. In this case, the time yeah. we passing a a Jinja, Jinja mm -hmm. template. So if you open the Jinja template file, you can see uh, some of the definition of the resources that we're going to be using. Yeah. So you can define, like for example, ah. uh, your network. So this is this kind of looks similar uh, to our, our you, big curl command, but it's even longer and it's a slightly different syntax, yes. but I'm sure it was partly informed by that, by your work to find those curl properties. Yeah. And, uh, and then we also have another file for a schema, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe we don't want to start messing up with this file that we don't want to edit manually, but in the schema, we can define some properties oh, that wow. are very common, right? Like, yeah. like the zone, mm -hmm. the machine type, the image family, proxy mode. Right, so this kind of defines yeah. a little bit of like an interface almost. Okay, exactly. huh. that's very neat. Uh, a question in the live chat from uh, Rajan about whether the last two are all ML ops, CICD things with no GUI. I think uh, pretty much <laughs> we can safely say yes, yeah. that, that, that's pretty much the case. Um, these, you know, we, we've got started at the GUI and then we went all the way down and we kind of zoomed out and we're now talking about kind of bigger orchestration approaches. So let's see, this created us a, um, a new machine. What did we call it? I assume we called it TFE eight or nine or something. Oops, I clicked create instance by accident. Um, and then meanwhile, I guess we, we may want to talk about what is coming up in um, the next, the final one, right? Uh, and where where yep. would number this eighth one deployment is it in deployment manager is that where I should be looking? I don't know if we actually oh we you already yeah so I executed it yeah so oh yeah so yeah in deployment manager you should uh, we yeah. should be able I was to trying to save that. us a little bit of time you know let it run while we talk about it yep, so sorry. do you know where deployment ah here it is there <laughs> so how good are you at brute force search. <laughs> So, oh, you know, uh, that's a good point. So in the script, we need to edit the YAML file and then uh, run the command manually. Otherwise, it's not, it's not it, it didn't Oh, it. gotcha. Uh, so uh, if you go to the to that folder, to the, uh, to the app from samples, yeah. Uh, yeah that, that. Oh, but we can, did we can since we have the we have it here yeah, the we can actually go go there on this machine which one are we editing the yaml yeah, yeah. oh we're not going to be able to edit it without a pseudo bin because i can't we're in a yeah funky directory right now all right so we need to change you can uh maybe you can just uh, put a valid mail so uh, we we configure the notebook instance as a. What what, is, what does it mean by mail? Single. Oh, so uh, you know when you create your notebook uh -huh. instance, uh, you can you can define who is going to access that instance, oh. right? Like 
if you want to use service uh -huh. account or if you want to have a single user access. Gotcha. So single user access is configured uh, using mail. Oh. So, uh, you, you can either delete those two properties. Uh -huh. So it just uses the default in the yeah, schema. So there's some or, just like that? Uh, or do we still have to yeah. keep properties? I think we okay, there's it. no properties to pass in this will work. Yeah. All right, yeah, let's just do that then. And then we, yeah. yeah okay. And then, uh, and what do we need to run? And then we, it would be the, if you go to the blog post, yeah. you can, we can run the gcloud deployment manager oh okay so that uh, wasn't part of our script yeah. yeah and hopefully it likes those dashes there <laughs> i can i can paste it do we need to set up the configuration uh environment variables first these uh, these gcp i guess that should all work because we're in we're already i think i think they're already there yeah, and we're in the vm we're so there. it's already pre-authenticated yeah. oh it didn't dislike it it's <laughs> oh, good that's nice. good sign so it's, uh, yeah it's creating something. something so now yeah. so now we go to the deployments it sh we should oh see, see it's in progress uh, oh yeah, yeah look at that nice very responsive nice. perfect i like this last modified date of december 31st 1969 it's very nice yeah. um going back in time perfect so we have the yes last let's one. get to the last one we are bringing in terraform which i have basically never touched <laughs> yeah it's not it's certainly not a common you know tool in the data science world so so this is very interesting yeah so uh, terraform uh, it's a tool by a company called HashiCorp. Mm -hmm. so terraform allows you to build change and version infrastructure uh, so basically again with some uh, configuration files you should be able to define the infrastructure that you want to spin up. So this is, uh, mind you have a, you need to launch a training job, right? That might use uh, like eight different machines with specific settings. You don't want to create a shell, shell script yeah. right, for that. Uh, you could, but you want to have a programmatically way to define your infrastructure. And that's exactly what Terraform is for. Gotcha. And uh, it's a third party, but we, we believe it makes sense to, to create something for for other other uh, other tools that are very popular out there mm -hmm. and terraform basically uses the the g cloud uh, compute the compute engine api to create these uh these uh these settings and uh the sample that we we're doing this now it's just create a notebook so uh, pretty much what we have is a main file right a main file uh, uh where we're going to be defining what are the uh what are the, the main settings for uh, your project? Like, think about credentials, think about project ID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Uh, region and some specific versions, right? Like, you want to define what's the uh, Terraform required version for, for when you run this, uh, this command. And also, we have a variables uh, file. Uh, and TF is Terraform, it's not TensorFlow. Yes. <laughs> I remember we, yeah, we, definitely. The first time I looked at this, I was like, oh, we got all these files, something.tf, something.tf. You can see in the folder instance.tf, especially main.tf and outputs.tf really threw me off. I was like, oh, are these TensorFlow outputs? I don't remember any file type called TF. And then, yeah, after a while, I realized, oh, wait, Terraform is also TF, just like TensorFlow. And that was definitely a wake up moment. <laughs> so I need to run these locally too, right? Or or did we already install these on the machine? Uh, we already installed those on the machine. So maybe if you type Terraform yeah. version, uh, we can show the audience. How Great. So yeah, there's our but Terraform version. And we should make sure, well, Compute Engine, of course, that's enabled since otherwise enabled. we would not be able to be doing any of the things we already did. Um, and so if we, so I, I should be in this folder, yes? Yes. And we uh, I'm going to initialize the the, the configuration. So we're gonna do a Terraform in it, and uh, maybe do a sudo. Uh, cool. You may now begin working with Terraform. Okay. Well, thank you for that permission. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, we want to run the Terraform uh -huh. plan. So Terraform plan is, is gonna look for our configuration files and validate that actually they are uh, they are correct. And also, in case uh, 
in case you need to enter settings, like for example, credentials, right? right? Like, uh, I, I think you can, um, it's user local source DFE and the DP dash oh, MLE. Yeah. Does it auto complete by any chance? Uh, nope, it just ties the tab. <laughs> it's okay not. because yeah, yeah. multiplexing for the win. Um, this file, right? Yeah. And then dp cloud so it's gonna verify our configuration in this case the on line 15 in provider google in main.tf invalid character slash dot tf i'm gonna go to line 15. there's no slash uh, that's super weird you gonna yeah you gonna try again the uh the entering the, the file the credentials file yeah that's how you think that's where it got messed up um oh it's missing a slash oh the missing slash Uh, let's see this one. Just fix it up in here. It's so handy to have a text editor always on hand, you know. That pp cloud mle. Now it's doing something. Oh, it did something. All right. Wow. What what did it do? So we. So if we go to the instance file, you, the Terraform instance file, you can see how we are defining similar settings as we did with the uh -huh. JSON file, with the uh, deployment manager file. And, uh, and in this case, you can see that uh, this is how you define your, your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very helpful, right? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, but, uh, and there's a lot of settings that you can use. Uh, with Terraform that are just out of the box. Right. Um, you just need to define how it looks like. And this, that's clean, yeah. right? And now we're just Another file. JSON oh. file. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question here uh, on the live chat saying it would be helpful if you post write-up links for broadcasts that we've hosted. Uh, I'm not sure if that's referring to, because we have this blog post that you very helpfully wrote. Um, but maybe you're talking about a, in general, kind of having more of a write up behind what we were live streaming here. And, and that's a good, good suggestion. So we'll definitely try to make that happen for the ones where we don't already have a write up uh, in place. See if we can't get that going. Um, Terraform, I guess that's Terraform then. Yeah, in general, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then, oh, we still have to run apply. So yes, it's actually so not created yet. Deployed. Yeah. That's interesting that you can create. Oh, come on. It's interesting that you can create a plan and do all these things. Wait, we have to enter a credential file again? Yes. I think there's a setting to. to, to uh, yeah, to just set the value instead of having me yeah. to type it every time. Yeah, yeah that, would, that would be nice. Is yeah. it going to ask me for the project too? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. All right. Enter a value. Plan. Two to add, zero to change, zero to destroy. Do you want to perform these values? Terraform will perform the actions above. Only yes will be accepted to approve. So it's like my choices are yes or yes. <laughs> Perfect. So if we go to the uh, to the computer engine instance, we should see something, something happening, like yeah. PM, something. Yeah. Let's see if anything's happening. Fire store, break table, app engine, compute engine. I really need a pin compute engine. I've been using it so much lately. Um, let's go down. Here we are. We have our VM being created. Um, sweet. So that's our 10 different ways. Nice. And yes. I guess I, we're, we're running out. We're out of time here. But if you did, you want to just mention your bonus bonus ways. <laughs> yes so like uh, you know we have uh, we have seen how to create machines but uh, you can scale vertically mm -hmm. right uh, for 
uh, training machine learning models, but in case you want to scale horizontally, you want to do distributed machine learning. So we also provide a specific instance which uh, uh, provides 100 megabits per second network. Okay. And, uh, and you need to define that in the latest GPU, GB NIC. That's, well, that's one, one other option to create. It's a, it's a large machine, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's for, yeah, it's meant for large distribution uh, right. uh, training jobs. And then our, our second bonus se here. Huh. Yeah, mo all the instances that we created are Debian okay. based. Uh, operating system, but we also support Ubuntu, and we're just going to be supporting other images yeah. soon. So you can you can define now uh, the different Ubuntu images. And we also support shielded VMs, which is a secure way of deploying uh, uh, compute engine instances so you can just add that option as well so uh, if you are using ubuntu uh, you can go ahead and, and, and use awesome that yeah so well. for folks who really prefer have very specific preferences between different flavors of linux <laughs> they'll be able <laughs> yeah. to have that access to that and i see you we have actually three bonuses not just two bonuses so that's exciting yeah and yeah we have the tensorboard dev dot project so if you are training your machine learning model. You want to share it with the world. Like you want to see how uh, good of uh, ML model you are creating. You can use use TensorBoard there. Dev, so uh, a TensorBoard dev allows you to share your TensorBoard uh, dashboard uh, publicly. Uh -huh. uh, we put an example there. Uh, so people don't need to get credentials for that, right? Uh, yeah, so this is the tensorboard.dev homepage and that uh, example that you have is here. This is just an example. So it's like a hosted tensor board. Super yes. nice. And we can make it big and we can zoom into a chunk of it. Yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, but uh, folks in the audience uh, have any other ways to do it, please, please feel free to comment on the blog post and we might be able to you know, add it or give a price. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, well, thank thank you, Gonzalo, for coming on today. It's been a blast. Uh, I think we have one final question or a comment from uh, Rajan. Rajan, he he's saying it would be neat if in the GUI console on in G uh, not in G Cloud, in the G Google Cloud console. There we go. Uh, when we have a VM, it can export as Terraform form code. So I think he's talking about how we could scroll down to the bottom and click the rest version if we could also do um you know terraform code and, and probably similarly to like in deployment manager maybe we could just like export as a terraform config and, and making it just slightly less manual so that we really bridge that gap between let's set up this environment manually and then just like capture that state mm -hmm. and export the terraform file or export the deployment manager config files that are relevant and that will make it easy to reproduce in the future yeah, that's a, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, we will take that. yeah that, that's really good. I, I think that would be really, really, really cool. And I think the DevOps community would be all over that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Dan says, yeah, it's more like 13 ways to, right? Depending on how we slice it, yeah. 10 different ways. We're, we're up to at least 13. Some of those had multiple, and you know, bonus ones. So super cool. Um, Gonzalo, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I'm going to switch off Thanks our so code okay. view. So it's just the two of us here on, on screen. But um, yeah, it was super great chatting with you today. I, think I learned a lot. Hopefully folks in the audience were able to um, you know, get something out of this and see some of the ways to use TensorFlow Enterprise. And more importantly, uh, understand that TF under Enterprise is really just, it seems like it's really just TensorFlow. It's just a nice version of TensorFlow that's, um, you know, shows up in a number of places and it's a way to get that consistent behavior across lots of environments yeah yes yeah. perfect. and um thank you yeah no time. thank you gonzalo uh it was it's been great and that wraps up this week next week uh we'll be we'll have um three episodes as usual uh monday we'll be doing a session uh just myself we'll be working on actually getting pubs up working did we already talk about that i don't think we did and I'll uh, show kind of connecting a push handler on to Cloud Run. And then Wednesday, Felipe Hoffa will be back. 
and we'll be doing um, you know the part two of the data studio work that we're doing we're launching kind of this thing called the the data show him and I and it's gonna be every other Wednesday so we're really excited for that and then Friday my colleague Andrew is gonna be on he's gonna be doing a session on automatic machine learning and kind of covering a number of different topics in that space so really excited to chat with him about that and learn more about kind of the the particular kinds of automatic machine learning that are out there you know some of them i was familiar with and a bunch of them i'd never even heard of so that's going to be really really interesting and so with that uh gonzalo thanks so much for coming on and uh, i guess i'll see you back in the office when i see you <laughs> see you when you see you <laughs> and for everyone else out there um yeah, take take care and and stay safe until we, until next week. And uh, Mint uh, says write up for people to refresh members after class. What does that mean? Refresh members after class. Can you elaborate on that? Um, memory. Oh, uh, a write up to to help refresh their memory. Yeah, and. Um, and if anybody's joining uh, from like one of the, the meetups or things like that, you know, let us know so I can kind of know where, where should this write up go? Do you have any preferences? Um, you know, should we put it on medium? Should I put it in the meetup kind of comments? Um, you know, thoughts about that as we kind of develop this whole process and try to figure out how to, um, you know, to make this uh, whole thing better. So anyhow, uh, we're, we're well over time, so <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll call it and uh, looking forward to seeing everybody next week. Take care and have a great weekend.